السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکمس یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹی تھری آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا ٹاپک آف واک دا برانڈ پلاننگ آفٹر ہیونگ لرن دا آل دا بیسک ایلیمنٹس آف دی مینجمنٹ پروسیس ریلیٹنگ دا برانڈنگ اسٹریٹجیز وی آر ناؤ آل سیٹ ٹو لک ایٹ دوز امپارٹنٹ پوائنٹس which really should be considered the while you come up with a plan. Now, this plan may relate to the introducing a new brand or this may relate to reappraising an existing brand. The process of uh, the brand planning remains the same. I'm going to talk about uh, this process in uh, three different steps. And uh, these three different steps are going to be spread over three lectures, including uh, the one we are into right now, the steps are the corporate strategy and brands. This basically means how the brands should be treated at um, the topmost level of the corporations. In other words, the kind of support with which uh, the top management must give its brands so that that support gets translated into the actions on part of all those who are going to execute those strategies. The second uh, the step is uh, the, what you may call the, the planning process itself. Now, the planning process relates uh, to all those uh, the elements that we have learned so far within the course, the meaning all those steps that, uh, that took us uh, the, from one phase to another phase in relation to leveraging the brand, starting with uh, the brand's vision, the into the brand's positioning, and so on and so forth. Those are the steps that uh, we shall be taking into consideration while we go through the planning process. So in other words, that this process is going to be very educative from the standpoint that not only we're going to learn how should we go about it while we are dealing with you know, certain brands within our areas of responsibilities, this also allows us an opportunity of revising in a summarized way, of course, and in a very practical way, all those elements that we have learned so far. The third um, step of uh, the, the brand planning process is uh, what you may call the strategic document or the, the actual brand plan. This document basically is uh, a framework of uh, the strategies which you're going to employ. And uh, this is going to be a very handy kind of a template for all of you, uh, wherever you are uh, relating uh, developing a plan whether that may be for a new brand or that may be for an existing brand. So in other words, you're going to have something ready-made onto which you're going to fit various strategies which you think should be employed for your respective brands in the practical field. And having said already, the process relates equally well to the launching a new brand or the reappraising an existing one. What uh, this process really does to the brand is that uh, it really challenges uh, certain uh, preconceptions or assumptions that uh, you may have uh, within the company uh, relating your uh, the brand, its movement in the marketplace, and uh, relating factors. So in other words, what this the branding process necessitates is the need for a very clear-cut strategy. And that is the strategy which really challenges those preconceptions and assumptions which I just indicated. And this automatically also means that this the branding strategy has got to be at the center of the corporate strategy. And that goes without saying because we know that the branding strategy has to stem from the inner core of the corporate strategy which uh, will show us the way toward the brand's vision and uh, the keeping in view that vision that we're going to decide uh, what is it that is the going to that it is going to take in order to, re to reach the destination because uh, you will recall the vision is that uh, you're standing here today in terms of uh, your brand and uh, you want to reach a certain uh, destination and whatever is going to be covered uh, between this point and that point is going to be a combination of various strategies which we're going to put uh, in place together uh, for uh, the execution of uh, the brand's movements. 
there uh, are many companies uh, that are uh, following this approach. Uh, the fact is that uh, most of uh, the good companies uh, all uh, follow this approach uh, because this is uh, a very well-structured approach with which uh, does not leave anything to chance. It um, considers uh, everything uh, very analytically, uh, meaning all the elements of uh, the branding process uh, very analytically uh, just to make sure that uh, your strategic moves are free of any flaws, at least those uh, which really can think of and, uh, and the ones uh, which uh, might uh, have the negative potential to cause disturbances as the brand moves by. And there also are uh, the companies which uh, do a lot of talk about the, the brand planning process, uh, give uh, the process a lot of lip service, but do not really uh, follow it in true the letter and spirit. So, proceeding with uh, the, the understanding of uh, the whole process, the, the first step that uh, is required on uh, the part of the, the top management of the company is that uh, they must have a very clear understanding of uh, the two strategic elements that really uh, lay the foundation of uh, this planning process. Those uh, elements are uh, pretty well known to you. Number one is uh, the top management must uh, define the, the essence of the brand. And this, in other words, means that um, the management has got to be very clear about the brand model. And this is something which uh, really takes us back to the dimensions of the brand which we learned in our lecture number three in the very beginning of the course. And you will recall that, um, the, that any brand has uh, the four different dimensions. There is a certain uh, the set of functions uh, which any brand is supposed to be performing for the target market the brand is uh, meant for. And uh, the second dimension uh, you will recall is that uh, a brand has uh, a certain set of uh, the differentiated uh, the characteristics uh, which uh, are meant for the, the segment the brand is uh, operating in. Uh, without uh, a decent level of uh, the differentiation, no brand really can uh, make its mark in the marketplace and uh, gain power and offer value to the company and to its customers. And uh, number three value uh, that you will recall is uh, the set of aims and the actual uh, the values uh, in terms of the benefits, the meaning the physical benefits and the emotional uh, the benefits which the brand offers uh, to the target audience have to be taken into account. The fourth dimension and also a very important dimension is all about the brand's the personality and the imagery that we are planning to create for the customers to perceive the brand the way it is planned. So these are the four important dimensions of any brand are the ones about which the top management of the company has to be very clear on. Now, when it is said that, it doesn't mean they do not understand that. What it really means is that uh, the top management has got to agree on uh, the, all the four dimensions. And the agreement is a function of uh, the ability of uh, the, uh, the management and uh, the overall company to uh, deliver all those dimensions to their customers. Uh, if uh, the company feels that uh, it doesn't really have the resources to execute the essence uh, which uh, is being talked about, then the company has got to be uh, very honest to itself and forthright in either uh, bringing about certain changes to the essence uh, which is uh, being talked about and hence define the brand from that particular standpoint or may discard it. The second uh, the element, I mean strategic element, about which the top management has got to be clear of is uh, what you may call the brand architecture. And uh, this is something which really takes us back to uh, our, the learning about uh, the portfolios of brand and uh, different uh, the branding strategies that we learned about uh, when we develop product relationship with brands. And you will recall uh, there are so many different strategies that uh, I talked about in relation to uh, those interrelations, the meaning of uh, the brand product interrelations. Product brand strategy, line brand strategy, umbrella of the brand strategy, 
endorsing uh, the brand strategy and uh, the source of the branding and so on and so forth. Uh, those uh, were the strategies that uh, really uh, the word talked about in relation to the uh, connection between the brand and the product. So uh, once they are clear about that, uh, they've got to uh, make sure we're uh, in the portfolio of uh, the, the brands uh, that this particular one really fits into. Once the top management is clear about these two fundamental elements, the understanding has got to be communicated to all concerned about execution. And this is the understanding which again you will recall has taken place with the help of uh, uh, all those uh, from uh, different functions uh, responsible for the total branding effort. So in other words, it is at this point that the significance of the topmost brand steering committee comes in. And once this agreement has taken place, this now has to be communicated. The communication is extremely important from the point of view that all those at the middle level and at the low level and also at the lowest possible level within the company have got to know uh, the decisions could be taken could be by the company in relation to uh, the execution process. And uh, importance of communication uh, has already been talked about and I do not really have to touch upon all those uh, the benefits could be which uh, could be internal communication could be offers. The fundamental point of significance is that uh, you should leave no stone unturned, the meaning the management of the company should leave no stone unturned in disseminating uh, that particular decision uh, that taken by the top management within the company. It has got to be uh, communicated. And it is because of that communication that uh, the sense of ownership uh, is going to be developed. And uh, once that uh, the sense is developed, uh, you get on with uh, the whole process. Let me tell you, many marketing strategies uh, fail in the marketplace not because the marketing strategies were not really creative enough or ingenious enough, did not take uh, all the elements into account. No, those marketing strategies fail because uh, not enough was done in relation to communicating those within the company. So in other words, all the people within the company who really were required to know what the strategies meant so that they really could gear themselves up for execution of those strategies, they were not really, really aware of those. And that offered the company a very serious problem of the lack of coordination, which really stemmed from the lack of communication. So this really uh, explains the, the importance of communication which has to be carried out internally within the organization in order to make sure that uh, everyone understands the strategic part. Um, everyone is supposed to be knowing and supposed to be executing. So the importance of um, the concept uh, could not be emphasized any more. The reason you carry out uh, this uh, the effort of uh, the internal communication is because you want to make sure that the agreement that was taken place uh, among the members of uh, the top management uh, that could be communicated. That's the way I started talking about the importance of communication. So back to that point of uh, the disseminating that agreement to the all concerned within the company. It is done through a technique of uh, what you uh, may call an internal workshop. An internal workshop of uh, the high ups uh, is uh, conducted within the organization. And uh, that workshop uh, consists of, again, those people who form, in most of the cases, the, the brand steering committee, because they are the people who are concerned about uh, the strategic uh, the considerations uh, underlying any given brand. So they uh, form uh, part of that uh, the workshop and they consider different strategic questions of uh, the very high importance. The kind of questions which uh, are uh, discussed among them are what kind of values 
customers and consumers could will miss if this brand could was not to be launched or if this brand could was not there at all. The discussion of um, this question could bring to the surface the level of interpretations by all from across different functions, especially in relation to the brand's identity. The question here is could if uh, the interpretations done by the different people from different functions within the company are not really uniformed, then there is something wrong with uh, what they are discussing. Meaning the essence or the brand model which they talked about and the brand architecture which they talked about are not really consistent and there are certain elements which they definitely missed. So this is uh, one of the uh, importance of uh, this kind of a question. Another reason uh, this question must be asked under any circumstances, we know that uh, any brand identity is uh, basically coined by uh, a set of values. The brand identity that you will recall is not uh, just about the packaging or the appearance of the brand, its colors, the typeface and so on and so forth. It is something which has got to form the inner core of the brand. And whatever you do in terms of your packaging and in terms of the brand name and in terms of the total imagery is an outward expression of the inner core which you must offer your target market. And therefore, the values which are at that core have got to be understood and there's got to be a uniformed interpretation of those values. Now, what are those values? This also takes us back to the dimensions of the brand and the essence of the brand or the brand model. And I pointed out at the beginning of the lecture that discussion about the brand planning process is going to be absolutely the beautiful and educative because uh, the, whatever I talked about is going to be in relation to what you, all, what you already have learned and therefore it is going to be a very uh, effective revision of those factors and elements. So back to the values, what are those values which you must talk about? If you are uh, going to launch a mineral water, you've got to be concerned about your uh, the customer's health and their well-being. In other words, uh, the health and well-being of your customers is a set of values that you really care about. Now the next question which must flash into your mind is, are you really in a position to uh, take care of these values? The meaning, you really can introduce a brand which uh, really has these values at the core and uh, having these values at the core means that you've got to be able to produce that and then you've got to be able to uh, sell that through the effective channels and then you've got to be uh, very effective in terms of uh, the integration of the total uh, communication campaign which uh, talks about uh, these uh, the fundamental values of your brand. Another example uh, that could be relating uh, cars. You are going to introduce a car and you really are concerned about your customers who you think must enjoy the ride. Now, the basic value of uh, this brand is uh, that your customers must enjoy the ride. In order for your customers to enjoy the ride, you have to look into so many uh, different strategic elements of uh, the, the production area and uh, the quality assurance area. Uh, you've got to uh, build into the, the process uh, a complete uh, the quality uh, with um, very convincing thoroughness uh, so that uh, that quality really can form the basis of the value that you are talking about. And uh, if you are a company that uh, is going to offer something which is just about the basic benefits of uh, the car, they may not uh, enjoy the ride uh, they may get uh, the good mileage out of uh, the gasoline that gets uh, into the car, uh, but that's not really compatible with the value with which uh, the, the management is uh, talking about. So in other words, whatever you are able to produce uh, must not be at odds with um, the, uh, the value which is at the core of the brand. So I would say that this is uh, the beautiful revision of uh, the dimensions of uh, the brand. 
Another uh, question which uh, you must consider as part of that uh, the workshop is, does this brand really offer high class quality and value? And this is the question which I already have explained with the help of the examples which I gave you. So this stands understood, I believe. Another question which you can ask yourselves is, is communication really integrated and it really leverages the brand? This again is something which I already have explained with the help of the examples that I talked about. Another question is about the distribution. And you will agree with me that I'm talking about all those questions which basically stem from the elements or the steps of the uh, the brand management process. You are in the process of uh, not only creating a brand, but also uh, managing it. You're going to make sure that uh, if it is a new brand, it must be managed uh, in order uh, for the brand to uh, move itself the way it is being talked about. So the next question which uh, must be considered uh, within the workshop is, uh, do all the departments uh, share understanding on all opportunities and risks? There are so many opportunities which the brand is going to offer and the brand is also going to be prone to various risks. Now, if there is um, a complete understanding among all those who form that workshop, then um, the blame game in terms of uh, the finger pointing uh, will not be done or will not be played once you know, things go wrong. This is not to say that uh, the things will go wrong, but in case you know, there are certain problems, there will not be finger pointings you know, here and there, that I said so, I told you so. So those are the kind of things which you must avoid and you know, must preempt you know, by going through a process you know, which, is, which is very comprehensive and you know, which you know, generates you know, ownership on everybody's part in relation to the opportunities and uh, the risks involved uh, with this brand. It uh, also harnesses the company's ability to fully capitalize and uh, leverage the available opportunities. I mean, if we talk just about opportunities, uh, it is not that uh, they, have an under, they have an understanding uh, only to avoid um, the blame game. It is um, because they also are going to be in a position to fully cash in on the, the opportunities which are there uh, in the marketplace for the taking to leverage your brand. Another question which could be the last question and which really is uh, a very heavyweight question is about the core competencies. You have got to ask yourselves, does the company really have the core competencies to be able to execute all which is being planned or which is going to be planned based on the brand model and the brand architecture? Because in this workshop, you're talking about the communication which is going to take place in relation to the understanding that has already taken place among the members of the top management. Now, this workshop is being conducted in order to make sure the kind of communication and uh, the timing of the communication uh, which is going to take place. And before it takes place, you are considering certain uh, questions of uh, the very high uh, strategic significance uh, just to make sure that uh, the whatever you communicate is not wrong. Uh, what are core competencies? The core competencies basically, in very plain terms, relate to the quality of human resource, having the ability to produce the right quality of the brand and then able to uh, control costs and uh, able to uh, offer good margins to the company and keeping the company very different from the rest of the crowd. So in other words, the, what these competencies uh, relate are uh, the, your competitive strength and the ability to uh, retain that strength and to uh, sustain that strength, in other words. And uh, the, during the process, the, uh, the management has got to uh, offer uh, the company uh, good margins. And uh, the good margins that you will really uh, recall uh, that come either from uh, commanding a good pricing point or uh, from controlling costs. Now, if you are commanding a good pricing point, it doesn't really mean that you may go costs as high as they can go. 
uh, you still have to control your costs because only then you're going to be a quality management company. Company they must make sure that uh, they really can offer products with uh, a decent level of differentiation. It can uh, control costs. It must offer uh, good uh, margins and uh, it must uh, be able to insulate itself uh, from the competition. Not only that the company should be able to have uh, the core competencies, the company may also have uh, what you must have learned from uh, the course on uh, strategic management, uh, what they call distinctive competencies, the meaning the company must be able, able to do all those things much better than uh, its rivals. So this is the approach which you have talked about within the workshop relating communication of the agreement among the top management. Having a complete understanding of the questions which the people within the workshop asked themselves and then came up with the convincing answers, the agreement that you seek through this technique is called brand chartering. So in other words, what you've done is through this workshop that you have created an agreement and then you see the same people who agreed upon those questions uh, have given a charter, uh, meaning they have uh, granted the company the uh, permission, so to say, to go ahead with uh, the execution of the strategy which is being uh, discussed and which is in the process of being crafted. Uh, that is what uh, this technique uh, does and it can be summed up as brand chartering. Uh, through this charter, uh, you seek a consensus among all uh, uh, who are uh, important within the company uh, from you know, various functions uh, and uh, then you uh, start communicating that particular decision uh, which is an extension of the primary decision uh, which was taken in the very first meeting uh, to all those uh, who are uh, going to be involved in execution of these strategies. So what you're going to do with the help of this internal communication is generate a sense of ownership and that sense of ownership is going to be very much cross-functional. All the people who are part of the workshop belong to various functions and it is because of their linkages and because of their belonging to those particular functions that their people who report to them are going to own what you have discussed or what is going to be now communicated. With this, our uh, the understanding uh, relating the first part of uh, the, the planning process uh, that comes to the, an end and uh, this, this is something which is going to lay the foundation of uh, the next step uh, which uh, you may call uh, brand planning. Now, do not be uh, confused between uh, this particular uh, phase of uh, the planning process because uh, it is such that uh, we end up uh, calling it uh, the brand plan, although it happens to be part of the overall three planning steps which I'm talking about. So, uh, what is it uh, that uh, the brand planning consists of? Let's talk about those. First of all, you have to have a very clear definition of uh, the market. The first step that uh, you must undertake to define uh, your market is that you must define it from your customer's point of view. Uh, what this really means is that uh, you've got to define it from uh, the uh, standpoint of needs, uh, meaning totality of needs uh, which are being fulfilled uh, within the market. And uh, this automatically means that you've got to talk about the competition and uh, the various needs uh, which are being fulfilled by all the uh, major and uh, the minor players uh, who should be reckoned with. That is uh, what it really boils down to. So in other words, uh, you are not to uh, talk only about that uh, the particular need uh, which you are going to fulfill in relation to one uh, the time frame or in relation to one particular purpose. What this really uh, means could be explained with uh, the help of an example. Suppose that you are part of uh, a market which uh, deals with all the thirst quenchers. So in other words, you are dealing with a huge market which consists of not only cola drinks but all kinds of uncola drinks and juices and also I would say mineral water. Um, so when you are defining this market, you have got to define this market uh, from that standpoint. The meaning you've got to talk about uh, all the, the segments which really form that market. After you have um, 
like they created an understanding of uh, the, the total market um, through writing, then um, you uh, get down to the segment which uh, is of particular importance to you. And uh, you start uh, talking about uh, the understanding which uh, took place uh, in relation to that uh, particular segment uh, because uh, that particular segment is going to lay the foundation for all the uh, strategic uh, considerations in terms of their executions for your brand. And uh, those uh, strategic considerations uh, were of your choice because uh, you discussed all that through the brand essence and uh, through the brand model. So this is where you're going to relate uh, your segment in which you're going to operate uh, with all other segments uh, which form the total market. So what it is going to do, not only for your own understanding, but also for the understanding for all those who are going to lay their hands on this particular a planning document could well know and understand uh, for all times to come could what really was the basis of uh, entering this particular market uh, with certain um, set of uh, strategic considerations. So this really confirms the legitimacy of uh, your uh, the considerations and uh, your uh, the brand chartering. Otherwise, uh, you are uh, not really making good use of the charter which has been given to you to execute the strategies. You also, like I said, take into consideration all the competitors because you're dealing not only with your own segment but also with other segments. And let me get the point out here that this process, although is very exhaustive in terms of its uh, analytical nature, but when it comes to the coming up with a plan, the, you are supposed to be the, putting the, all those analyses uh, the, very precisely and very concisely uh, as the part of that planning document. Uh, while talking about the, the competition, the, you have to the, talk about all the attributes the, which your competitors have. Uh, the, you must talk about the threatening postures of uh, various competing brands, which is the one which is your uh, direct competitor and which is the one which is not very direct. And uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses and so on and so forth. Uh, you talk about all these things because uh, you are going to relate all that with uh, all those strategies which are going to flow out of all these uh, considerations that you have put in place. There has got to be a total consistency of effort and that is the beauty of this planning process. You also should talk about the market growth factor because do not forget again that you are in the process of defining your market and toward that definition you started talking about the needs in their totality. You talked about the need you're going to fulfill and you talked about the competitors who formed that particular market and you also must talk about the growth factor meaning whether the market has been growing very fast or uh, has been moving in a steady manner uh, or uh, maybe the market is uh, kind of declining. You never know that. So whatever life cycle stage you are dealing with in relation to your market, you must talk about that because all these factors are going to have a very important bearing on your brand's movement. We are uh, done with uh, the first step of uh, the planning process and uh, the first step is about defining your market. The second step um, within this overall uh, the planning process um, phase is uh, what you may call market analysis. You have to analyze your market very thoroughly, starting with your the buyers and users. So in other words, what I'm talking about is that you must have complete understanding of who your buyers are and how they constitute the market in terms of demographics. Okay, you must know the who, why, when, where, and what of your market. And uh, these are uh, the points uh, which uh, I talked about in uh, the great detail in one of the, uh, the lectures at the very beginning of the course. Because uh, when you know the, uh, the who, why, when, where, what factors, uh, you generate a complete understanding of uh, who those uh, the customers are, in what quantities they buy, and uh, from there you develop a certain criteria uh, on their part in terms of their uh, the buying habits. And uh, you also get to know how could your brand or how could your competitive brands are going to fit into their lives. Whether 
uh, with your brand and other, other brands that are just about uh, uh, fit into their lives in terms of uh, performing certain the basic questions or you know there are brands that, uh, that offer the very uh, emotional kind of values to their customers and uh, what is it which uh, you are uh, going to be concerned with so therefore you've got to analyze your market from uh, all these uh, points of view and that takes care of uh, the who where why when and what factors you must also talk about your uh, segment the meaning the immediate segment which you are dealing with and uh, then you must talk about the relationship which uh, that segment may have with other segments of that particular market. The reason that you talk about uh, your own segment in the first place and uh, about others in the second place and the third place is that uh, you've got to develop all the relationships, meaning all the possible relationships from the standpoint of getting into brand extensions at any given point in time. So, in other words, what you're doing is you are looking into the possibilities that may be offered to you by the brand which you are talking about and which is the subject of planning at this particular moment. And it is at this moment that you've got to be imaginative in terms of all those opportunities. Remember, I talked about the opportunities and risks. The understanding about opportunities and risks uh, is already there and uh, it is um, an extension of that uh, particular understanding that uh, you look into the various segments from the standpoint of uh, developing something uh, different uh, in uh, months or years to come. You've got to be prepared for that. You also could have to have the ability of changing trends. Uh, what are the trends that are creating the changes within the, the makeup of uh, the different segments and what are the changing trends that may create the new segments in the near future. You have to have the ability to gauge the various trends which uh, they may have the potential of uh, the creating new segments or uh, bringing about certain changes within the makeup of uh, um, the existing segments. Uh, the ability to spot growth uh, of uh, new segments that will keep you uh, proactive and uh, preemptive in your uh, strategic moves and uh, will offer you the uh, strength of uh, uh, competitiveness. It um, really is uh, very important on part of any of the brand managers to know their market to the extent that uh, all the, the changing trends could become uh, known to them in a very clear way and uh, therefore they should be in a position to see uh, the, what are going to be the changes within the segment they are operating in and uh, the, what are the new segments which are going to be created by those new trends and uh, how they should be improving the level of uh, preparedness in responding to those changes and then uh, making moves for brand extensions or maybe new brands to serve those emerging Friends, that is the basic uh, the concept and the basic thrust of uh, the, uh, the planning process that you must take into account while you analyze uh, your market from uh, the point of view of segmentation. Another uh, the factor which uh, you uh, must not ignore and uh, you know that as much as I do is that of competition. Now I'm going to talk about competition from uh, the standpoint of uh, the market analysis. Uh, you've got to know the, the strengths of uh, your competition and uh, the uh, level of threat in particular which uh, each of uh, them poses to your brand. Only because uh, of the right assessment of the threat, you are going to be in a position to make the right moves about your brand. So in other words, uh, this is uh, the part of the, the planning process in which you have to give uh, as much importance to competition as you give to your customers. So in other words, the competition and customers have got to be given an equal level of importance. You just cannot operate or plan uh, in a vacuum. The moves of uh, your competitors they will always keep you on your toes and uh, they will always uh, keep you ready to bring about any changes or improvements in uh, your moves. So that is the uh, the reason uh, you have to take uh, the competition into account at this particular uh, the point of the planning process. The 
competitive advantages which your brand offers, you must list those one by one and the competitive advantages of your competitive brands which you think are offered to your competitors, meaning by their respective brands, also must be considered and studied so that you really know your strengths and weaknesses vis-a-vis -vis your competition. That's very important. Yet another uh, the factor that you have to uh, put into the planning process and also in terms of the revision of the course, it becomes very interesting, is the channels from the standpoint of their uh, structure and uh, their makeup. So the meaning you've got to uh, be very clear about uh, what is the uh, kind of channels uh, best suited to uh, your circumstances. Are you going to go through the, the market uh, established uh, the norms? Or are you going to go for something which is very creative? Well, in most of the cases, the companies like to follow the market norm, and that's the way it is. But uh, in case you think you also can come up with something which is going to be creative and which is going to create a combination of uh, the different sets of uh, the channels or different uh, the levels of channels and different forms and shapes of channels, you uh, they should consider that and uh, you uh, should bring uh, that um, uh, into significance as part of your uh, overall planning process. The objective here is to make sure that you as a company must be very efficient in reaching your customers and you also are cost effective. The two very important lessons could be learned from uh, the discussion on uh, the channels of distribution. So with this objective in mind, you've got to talk about those channels which are well suited to your objectives. The meaning you've got to be in a position to achieve your objectives. And this is something which applies equally well to your tangible product brands and your service brands. So regardless of the distinction between the nature of two, you've got to undertake a good exercise relating your channels. You will recall there are certain services which still need to beef up their channels of distribution. When we talk about those services in relation to the overall industry within our market and therefore you've got to talk about the channels of distribution which are best suited to your brands. May those be service brands or may those be tangible product brands. Another uh, the important factor that uh, you must talk about is the, the driving forces or the basic drivers. We've got to have a very good understanding of uh, the basic drivers of change. And the drivers of change in a market are known as the, the driving forces. Any market is uh, the subject to these drivers. There are certain drivers which are uh, very uh, strong and uh, they're full of energy, the meaning they really cause uh, some uh, huge uh, changes. And uh, there are drivers which are kind of dying because of the changing circumstances. But the fact is that you've got to look into all those uh, the drivers which have the potential to cause changes and uh, the changes which may affect your performance in terms of uh, the achievement of objectives, the meaning in terms of uh, executing your strategies. Uh, what are those uh, the drivers and uh, what different shapes and forms they take? Let us uh, talk about those uh, one by one. It is very important for you to have uh, a good level of understanding regarding these. The first one is the changes in long-term industry growth. Now, this is uh, the one of the drivers uh, which you have to take into account in relation to uh, any industry that you are uh, a part of. The shift in industrial growth, upward or downward, is a force that we must study and analyze. What is it that is causing that shift is what we call a driver. Let me explain this concept with the help of an example. The example relates the growth of the car market in Pakistan. What is it that is causing that growth, meaning that shift? The reason we look into that because it really has a lot of repercussions for the manufacturers or for the brand managers because they have to cope up with the exploding demand and they have to cope up by either putting up additional plants 
uh, the meaning beefing up their uh, the capacities or uh, the by uh, the importing uh, the maybe built up models but the, whatever they decide to do that is uh, the repercussions of uh, the shift you know that has taken place because of the driver and that the driver is causing that change what is that driver the driver is bank financing for example it is uh, because of the ease with which an uh, the average customer can um, go for a car and um, the financial product which uh, was basically created by banks offered to their customers who in turn are in a position to use that product to buy something that fulfills their needs and that is cars that is electronics and that is so many other consumer durables so what i'm talking about the repercussions of uh, the driver of growth you've got to take into account one driver or all those drivers which are uh, the pushing growth unless uh, you take that into consideration uh, your planning is going to be at odds uh, with the objectives that uh, you set to yourselves or um, else it is not going to offer you all those opportunities uh, which you must capitalize on in order to grow fast the other driver which uh, you must consider is the changes in who buys the product and uh, how they use it so in other words the repercussion of uh, the changes in use of a certain product i would like to explain this with uh, the help of uh, an example from the foods industry uh, let us talk about uh, the a manufacturer who has uh, just offered uh, chicken portions i mean ready to cook uh, chicken portions as um, snacks that can be used at any time of the day maybe the customers could find the product so attractive and the show so useful uh, that they start using that product as uh, the regular meals maybe as part of their breakfast as part of their lunches and dinners and uh, the repercussion again is uh, in terms of growth and growth has come about because of certain changes uh, in the ways the people have started using um, that particular product so if you are reappraising your brand you've got to take into consideration uh, this particular driver and even if you are in the process of launching a new brand you've got to take into consideration um, this factor because uh, this is going to bring you uh, not only at par uh, but i would say this should place you in a position with a much um, better padded than the one your competitors are if they have uh, learned something uh, by making certain mistakes uh, you must know that situation uh, to your benefit and uh, then fully capitalize on the situation uh, by knowing the driver uh, for that particular change and uh, that change is a driver let us now get to summarize uh, the whatever we have talked about uh, within this lecture i started talking about the, the planning process and told you that uh, the process consists of three uh, the major parts the first part is the corporate strategy and brands with which uh, basically relates to the treatment given to brands at the topmost level and how a strategy gets translated into so many uh, the various strategies and executions and so on and so forth uh, basically it is about the support with which uh, the a brand must get from the top level and um, the support is um, a major decision and that decision is then communicated to all concerned within the organization the second the step of uh, the planning process is uh, what you also call the planning process and uh, that planning process uh, consists of uh, all the elements that we have learned in relation to the whole course the meaning uh, all those steps uh, that are involved in the managing and leveraging your brand starting with brand's vision to brand's positioning to brand's uh, the channels communication pricing so on and so forth and uh, this step consists of uh, the so many different sub steps and in that relation i started talking about the need for uh, defining the market and uh, the second st sub step is about uh, the market analysis i'm still in the process of uh, talking about that uh the while the time uh, is running out so the let us pick it up from uh, where i'm leaving in the next lecture 
Allah Hafiz until that time and thank you very much.